Welcome to the Solid KM University channel. This video's topic is deburring cross holes. So I'm calling it deburring cross holes, but it could pretty much apply to the deburring or the edge breaking of anything that isn't a straight line horizontally or vertically, or even maybe a taper. In a previous video, we would have seen how you could do this sort of thing with a contour 3D toolpath. Here, I'm gonna use HSS projection, only because if we take a look on the inside of this part, I've got something that is pretty much purely 3D. Uh, I won't be able to do that with a contour 3D without some, some jumping around. I want this to be one fluid motion when I deburr the inside of that cross hole. So let's take a look how we would do that. Let me just get this thing back to being shaded and we can take a look on the inside there. So uh, I'm gonna use HSS projection, which is gonna use the surfaces of this hole and I'm gonna project a curve onto that hole. Uh, now, the curve usually could be the edge of the surface, but in this case, if I try and use these curves, these edges here, they all meet at the same point. So SolidCam is going to think that I have two chains here, and I don't want to do this in two chains. I want to do this in one actual fluid motion. So what I want to do is kind of make a three-dimensional figure eight using these. And I'm just going to uh, actually do some of that in sketching inside SolidWorks. So first, let's start with a sketch. I'll go into our part, so I'll go Feature Manager. Right click on design model, edit part, and I'm gonna create a 3D sketch. So instead of selecting sketch, I'm gonna to go to 3D sketch. And 3D sketch allows me to use the same sort of features we normally would use in 2D, but it makes them in the third dimension. It does that by asking you which plane you wanna work on. Say for instance, if I'm gonna do a point, or sorry, a, a line here, you can see there's an XY connected to my mouse. That's because I'm actually gonna sketch in the XY plane, in this 3D sketch, but I can toggle between the XY, the YZ, and the XZ planes. Um, what I'm actually gonna do is I'm gonna uh, actually cheat a little bit. With 3D sketching, you can work with the geometry that's on screen, so you don't even have to worry about what plane you're on. And I'm gonna do so by first extracting these edges. I need to pull them into this sketch, so I'm gonna use Convert Entities. I'm gonna grab that edge, and that edge. Now I'm not gonna choose these bottom ones because SolidWorks is actually considering this edge and this edge to be one edge. Again, because of that kind of connection there between the features. So I'm just gonna grab those two and I'm gonna do a mirror of those ones I just created in this sketch. And I'm gonna mirror about a plane that I created earlier. This plane is literally just the mid plane of the cube. Okay, so now I've extracted those two edges there. Um, and again, we need to make a break in there or else it's gonna consider those to be two chains. So I'm gonna go in there, I'm gonna zoom in, I'm gonna go back to that line command and I'm actually going to ignore the fact that it wants to work on the X, Y plane. I'm just gonna choose this contour until I get that yellow box that says, it. I'm about to create a line that's coincident with that edge. I'm gonna do the same with the other edge. As long as I got that yellow box on my mouse, letting me know that the end point of that line is coincident, with that contour, then I know that in, in this floating space, in the infinite space, that thing just connects right there. Now I'm gonna go to Trim Entities, and I just wanna get rid of these lines here. And I'm gonna get rid of that line I created there before as well, because I don't need that. And there you go, so I've broken it up, and that sketch pretty much is my three-dimensional figure eight. I'm gonna start from here, go across, when I get to that point, change direction, go this way, and then end there. So I have that kind of nice fluid motion. It's gonna think of that as one continuous curve. Now I'm doing it this way with planes and, and, um, and convert entities and all that, only because the edges of this particular part don't yield themselves to a very easy toolpath. If I wanted to do this in really smooth two circles, two HSSs, I could easily do that. But in this case, I wanted to just uh, do one fluid motion, just so that way it's one tool path. The operator can just take a look at this thing as it goes in and done. So that's why I'm doing all this sketching. But for your part, you don't necessarily have to do convert entities. You don't have to do sketching. If you want to just use the edges, you could easily do that. The tool path works the same way, no matter what contour or sketch you select. So let's go to HSS. We've got projection, user define, which means that in my geometry, I'm gonna choose the surface that I wanna to project to. In this case, I'll just choose the surfaces of the hole. 
I'm going to project to the surface normal, which in our case is really just going to be to the surface itself. So since my sketch is on the inside, it'll just project outwards radially to that surface. Projection curves, well, that's my curve that I, select, that I, I just created. Uh, because I'm dealing with some small uh, gaps there, I'm just going to check my gap settings here to make sure that they're not going to jump ahead of me and try and close the curve. So now we're ready to go. I'll just highlight that first curve. I'll make sure I go down this direction. Grab that curve there, that curve there, and we're done. So that should come out as one continuous curve. Let's go to Tool, Select. In this case, for my deburring, I've got my lollipop, my 3 8 lollipop. Let me just take that in there. Toolpath parameters. I can say, we'll leave it at Tool Center. Uh, let's go to Link. I'm going to tell it to use a lead in and lead out, only because I know as a lollipop, if I try and follow that chain, it's probably going to uh, scratch the inside as it goes down. So let's just put in a orthogonal line. Orthogonal line of length, let's just say 50,000, just so that way it's off the wall as it approaches down. Uh, if you wanted to go down the center, you can put in a proper length there so it goes down the center, but I'm just going to do this real quick using this. You could add a gouge check. I'm not going to, only because. Um, I'm pretty sure that if I got this thing going down 50 thou away from the wall, it's not going to scratch anything. And if we take this to a transparency, you can see there's my kind of um, back flipping figure eight that I have there. Now, how does that look in Solid Verify? Okay, again, we're in my hybrid mode indicated by that second uh, icon there. So we can look down the, the hole there and let's just play this through. So it goes down, across that contour, across the bottom contour. When it gets to that line, it changes direction. It's one tool path, nice couple of arcs, retracts out, and we're, uh, that's it. So again, you just need a surface that you want to project to. You just need a contour or a sketch to project onto that surface. I did a sketch here only because this particular part so I needed to do some extra sketching. But overall, all you need is a surface and a sketch just of what you're trying to deburr. In this case, I just grabbed the sketches of those kind of interfacing there. That's nicely smooth. You can see the blue lines there indicating that that was deburred slightly. And uh, if you need anything, uh, any help with this, this is the kind of thing that you can actually call in and we can help you with the geometry selection. But overall, it's a really simple toolpath for something that could be a little bit of, of a pain when you're doing this sort of internal deburring. Anything else like this, just give us a call at 1-866-975-1115, extension 2. Uh, you can send us your parts or your questions via the ticket system at solidcamsupport.com. And stay tuned for the rest of the videos on this YouTube channel. Thanks for watching.